is LBC from Global, leading Britain's conversation, The Nigel Farage Show. Mr. Nigel Farage. Thank you, Donald. Well, the big day comes. And of course, I'm here in Strasbourg and Theresa May was here last night, a last minute press conference. Let's just remind ourselves why. Back at the end of January, she suffered an historic defeat to her withdrawal agreement. She lost, if you remember, by a margin of 230 votes. And this all led to senior backbench conservative Sir Graham Brady putting forward an amendment to say that the government should replace the backstop with alternative arrangements and it passed including of course the support of Theresa May herself so what happened last night well what happened last night was this the withdrawal agreement did not change one little bit but we got some new documents we got a joint instrument document we got a unilateral declaration by the UK and we also got a supplement to the political declaration and I promise you uh, if you want to read it all it's not very easy to comprehend but last night late at midnight in a press conference sitting next to Jean-Claude Juncker Theresa May told us about this great breakthrough Third, Third, alongside the joint instrument on, <coughs> on the withdrawal agreement, the United Kingdom government will make a unilateral declaration that if the backstop comes into use and discussions on our future relationship break down so that there is no prospect of subsequent agreement, it is the position of the United Kingdom that there would be nothing to prevent the UK instigating measures that would ultimately disapply the backstop. That use of the word would, it was a certainty. We would be able, if things broke down, to get out of the backstop. That is what the vicar's daughter told us last night. And I know a lot of you have got great faith in her. A lot of you perhaps feel sorry for her. Uh, but when I heard that last night, uh, I said to myself, is she, is she actually telling the truth? Well, today we found out from the Attorney General, Geoffrey Cox, and he told us exactly what the legal position was. Let me make it clear. The legal risk, as I set it out in my letter of the 13th of November, remains unchanged. As a political judgment, the House should now enter into those arrangements. Well, he makes it perfectly clear, and he, he wrote a letter, and he signed it off, and the last sentence of that letter couldn't have been clearer. The legal risk remains unchanged risk remains unchanged, that if, through no such demonstrable failure of either party, but simply because of intractable differences, there is no internationally lawful means of exiting the protocol's arrangements. I repeat, there is no internationally lawful means of exiting the arrangements. So there's the Prime Minister telling us an amazing breakthrough. We would be able to leave the backstop unilaterally, and today... Her Attorney General shoots it down in flames. This was Mrs May earlier on today begging MPs to vote for her deal. A lot of focus has been put on legal changes and I'll come on to the fact that there are legally binding changes as a result of the discussions since uh, the House's vote on the 29th of January. Um, but uh, if you, I'll just complete this. My, uh, but the right honourable gentleman is absolutely correct. The danger for those of us who want to deliver, to have faith with the British public and deliver on their vote for Brexit, is that if this, if this vote is not passed tonight, if this deal is not passed, then Brexit could be lost. So there we are. Back my deal or Brexit could be lost. And it really is the last throw of the dice from a Prime Minister. I'm sorry she's got a bad throat, uh, but I did notice when she was coughing yesterday, she always seems to cough before she says something that is demonstrably untrue. So I think seems to me this deal goes down. I know the ERG have been meeting and, and perhaps bringing us some news of that meeting is LBC's political editor, Theo Usherwood. Theo, good evening. Good evening, good evening Nigel. Nigel. Um, just to bring you up to date with where we are right now, we have a vote at uh, seven o'clock. It will be just a straight up and down vote on Theresa May's deal. And according to the calculations that I and others have done, we're expecting a defeat of around 150. There have been 20 switchers this afternoon, people like uh, Ben Bradley, the uh, vice chair of the Conservative, former vice chair of the Conservative Party, saying that he will now support Theresa May's deal. Uh, Johnny Mercer, the MP down in Plymouth, former soldier, saying he will now support Theresa May's 
uh, deal. But, Nigel, it has only been a trickle. It has not been the flood that the Prime Minister has been looking out for and hoping for. Boris Johnson, a few moments ago, stood up in the House of Commons and described it as a humiliation. He said the only way forward now was to leave the European Union without a deal if the UK wanted to maintain any sense of self-respect and avoid a humiliation. So Theresa May facing uh, a defeat tonight. It will be a heavy defeat, though not as heavy as last time. And now uh, she has to, and then she will have, have to decide immediately after that vote about how to proceed next and whether to go for an extension of Article 50. How does she survive this, Theo? I mean, it seems to me she's politically, uh, you know, she's, she's placed everything on us leaving the European Union on March the 29th. And she could, I suppose, stick with the legislation and take us out with no deal. But given she's given us, given there's no indication of that, can she survive as leader? She can survive as leader, Nigel. She has a couple of options. If we go with the first option that she's talked about previously and gave a commitment to the House of Commons to pursue, that is tomorrow there'll be a vote uh, on a no-deal Brexit. Uh, Tory MPs would be offered a free vote. Labour have indicated that they wouldn't support that. And so that vote would be uh, likely to fall. And so we would go into Thursday and there would be a vote on an extension to Article uh, 50. The European Union uh, said uh, yesterday that that could only go up until the European elections on May the 23rd and of course it's very unlikely, almost impossible in fact, that she could secure any actual changes as a result of that extension. It would simply be about trying to uh, change the perception amongst members of the DUP and within uh, MPs within her own party uh, and, and, and trying to persuade them that the only other extension would be much longer and then that would result in a uh, second uh, referendum. Now, if it is closer, we are. There is a understanding, a belief, uh, a sense, a momentum behind the idea that Theresa May might decide uh, to put the vote again immediately. Uh, to the House of Commons uh, tomorrow in the hope that uh, given, uh, how, uh, given how close we are to an extension of Article 50 on Thursday, MPs might be persuaded to vote for it. Sounds a bit unlikely to me. Theo, thank you. Please don't go too far away. So if you were there, sitting in that chamber tonight, what would you do? Because there are risks here, very clearly risks. I mean, Nick Bowles, for example, the Conservative MP and Remainer, he said today, you know, we will do, and he's talking here to the Eurosceptics, we will do whatever it takes to frustrate you. We will vote to stop no deal. We will vote to extend Article 50. And we will work with the opposition parties to build a majority for a softer Brexit deal. So you've actually got Tory MPs openly threatening each other. And, you know, there are people. I mean, Tracy Crouch was saying not long ago she's going to vote for the deal because she genuinely fears that if she doesn't, there'll be an extension and there could be no Brexit at all. My position, and if this does come to the European Parliament where the final vote is under Article 50, my position is quite clear. I think this deal is so awful in many ways, it's worse than the EU membership we've currently got. I think it should be rejected. But you tell me, what would you do if you were in that House of Commons tonight? I wonder, Elizabeth in Greenwich, who's a first-time caller. Elizabeth, if you were there tonight, what would you do? Oh, hello, hello. Nigel. It's lovely to speak to you. Um, Nigel, I would vote it down, as I would have all along. Um, but my question to you is, if the default position with no deal is that we legally, we can leave, why isn't that being pushed? Who would push that? Who would put that through? Because this is just all this extension business and all this threatening. If, if the default position is to leave, we've got, we've got no deal. deal. Yeah. The position's simple, Elizabeth. It's really simple. There is a piece of legislation. It is the EU Withdrawal Act. It is the law of the land of this country, and it says we are leaving at 11 p.m. on March the 29th with or without a deal. Uh, and the truth of it is, if the Prime Minister does nothing, and she and the government are the only people that can change that law, we would leave, if she's got the will to do it. Right. What happens if um, they vote the no deal down? Because that's, that, that's not actually law, is it? If they were to say tomorrow... Um, yeah. If they vote the no deal down, the Prime Minister could simply ignore them by not changing the legislation. She could still deliver Brexit. She could, Elizabeth, in my opinion, still get a statue on the fourth plinth in Trafalgar Square. The trouble is, she said in the past that she would abide by the decision of the House of Commons. Right.
and not by by the by the um, the, the electorate. <laughs> Well, I, look, you know, one thing about this um, this leader of ours, uh, she's very, very good at saying one thing and doing another, so she's unpredictable. My view is that she hasn't got the courage or the self-belief uh, to take us towards a no-deal Brexit, which right now is the only way, I think, that Brexit voters like you can get delivered what they voted for. Elizabeth, thanks for your call, and it is actually worth noting uh, that a YouGov survey, uh, albeit the work was done before last night's press conference, but it showed this week, that only 12% of adults think Theresa May's deal honours the Leave vote. What does Jeff in Ilford, another first-time caller, make of it? Good evening, Jeff. Good evening, uh, Nigel. Yeah, I think this is a, a, a dead duck. But what happens now? As far as I'm concerned, this withdrawal treaty is a wretched affair that's been with us for two and a half years, and they are still tinkering with it. Geoffrey Cox has been the latest tinkerer-in-chief, and it's getting us nowhere. I think we should stand back, review the options we have, and in this respect, the WTO option stands head and shoulders above everything else, and that would be the now the most popular view in the country, isn't it? That is now the most popular view in the country. But, Jeff, you just criticised Geoffrey Cox. Wouldn't you agree with me that actually today he did the honourable thing and he told the truth? Oh, he certainly did that, yes. I mean, that, that's quite, uh, uh, quite an unusual thing to have happen when, when this treat is concerned. Yes. That's what I thought. I wonder, Jeff, could Geoffrey Cox be the next leader of the Tory party? Well, he's got the voice for it. Certainly has. Jeff, do you feel totally disenchanted with politics and this Brexit process? No, I, th I think, Nigel, as I say, if we, if we um, uh, 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 went for the WTO option, which is a constitutional issue and as such cannot be left just to the vagaries of Parliament, it should obtain the sanction of the British people by referendum. And if they say yes, that would be the signal for uh, uh, Theresa May to go. Well, I, 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 at some point she will. Michelle Barnier just tweeting, listening to the debate in the House of Commons, there seems to be a dangerous illusion that the UK can benefit from a transition in the absence of the withdrawal agreement. Let me be clear, the only legal basis for a transition is the withdrawal agreement. No withdrawal agreement means no transition. He loves us, that Barnier, doesn't he? He really does. You're listening to The Nigel Farage Show here on LBC at 6.15 and time for the news headlines. Lisa Rizzi. Well, Mrs May Strasbourg dash last night just has not done the business because the Attorney General Geoffrey Cox has said, look, actually, the truth of it is, the truth of it is, there is no internationally lawful means of exiting the arrangements, namely the Irish backstop. So she's going to lose tonight. The question is, by how much? I'm also wondering just how long she can actually survive as leader. But lots of pressure is coming on MPs. Vote for this agreement, the Prime Minister said, or there could be no Brexit. And within the last 10 minutes, Michel Barnier, charming to the end, is saying, if you don't vote for this agreement, there will be no transition period. What, he, what he's saying is that we would crash out. That's the words they all use on WTO terms. Well, I don't know about you. I've had enough of us being pushed about by these unelected bureaucrats. They're arrogant, rude, and they don't seem to like us very much. That's my view. But tell me I'm wrong when I say this deal should be voted down. Tell me it should be voted for. Call 0345 Ben in Bristol is calling. Good evening, Ben. Well, well greetings well, again from Babylon. Babylon. Hi there. Nigel. But, but, you know, you know, sense the weariness in my voice. You know, sometimes over the times we've spoken, we've spoken a lot, and I've kind of often been more on more the May side than you were. But even I admitted to you a couple of months back that I think that, that I was wavering greatly. But I see her today, when her voice broke in that comment, it was as though the voice is such a powerful thing of authority, isn't it? It was as though the physical represented the spiritual. The physical authority was gone. Open, didn't she, ben? She's on like a last chance saloon. Like if she gets this through, who knows? You know, it could be a mercurial last minute. But it's highly unlikely. Where is the courage to just stand up and say, "Okay, you didn't accept this deal. I'll put it through. I'll give it what is that people are asking for. I'll give it the no deal. I'll push it through." It's staring her in the face. That amazing statistic: forty-four percent of people would back her on that. Incredibly powerful. Um, statistic yet lacking the courage to do it. I think there's a time when a leader's 
authority is just wanes. I cannot see, Nigel, I have no energy to keep believing in that she might just get it right. You know, I like to give people a chance. It's like that football manager who carries on, you know what I mean? The fan, a lot of the fans wet back him, a lot of them are saying sack him, and they're, but there's certain results that come. You know what I mean? You lose. Ben, and Ben, my problem with her, my problem with her, isn't just one of competence, isn't just one that she never believed in it. It's that, frankly, and I'm going to say this, I think she's been openly duplicitous with us again and again and again. You know, there she was last night, you know, here in Strasbourg, saying we would, I'm definitive, we would be able to leave the backstop unilaterally. And it, Ben, it just wasn't true. You know, Nigel, and also when I spoke to you a couple of weeks ago, if you remember with Esther McRae, I couldn't believe it. You know, I, you might not recall it to us. I said to her, Esther, who's really pulling the strings here, you know, in the negotiation? And she said it was Ollie Robbins. I mean, right. I mean, it's just... That's right. It's an outrage. Ben, she's not like... So the deal goes down. What happens then, Ben? Do you think she's got the guts to go for no deal or is it extension? I, I pray and hope this last chance saloon is she'd have to buck up and say, I'll go all out, no deal. Otherwise, make way for somebody who has got the guts to do it. Absolutely. Ben, thank you for your call. Always good to hear from you. Helen on Facebook says, we should take no deal. I'm fed up with all these scare tactics. Here, here. Peter says, it's correct. Is it, is it correct? We're to be charged a billion for every month we extend. Well, Peter, that was the position, but now Barney is saying there could be no extension at all. Well, at least that would save us some money, wouldn't it? Brenda says, the majority of MPs put party interests ahead of those of the country and democracy. Corbyn and those around him are merely in pursuit of power. I think Corbyn has come out of this looking a bit selfish and looking at though yeah it's his interest and the Labour parties that matter more and Derek says it's just could 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 always could nothing definitive yeah but Derek last night she said would and it wasn't true the vicar's daughter said something that wasn't true I don't think she's long for this job and I wonder I really wonder whether Jeffrey Cox is the kind of figure that both wings of the Conservative Party could come around and he could be appointed without a contest. Maybe I've got this wrong, but I think today he's behaved honourably and truthfully. I genuinely do. Charles is calling from Birmingham. Charles, imagine you've got 35 minutes to go. You're in the House of Commons. What are you going to do? Vote him down straight away. It's, why? It's, it's, it's just no good. It's, it's, it's towards his it's backstop. Uh, and it's, we still got this CGJ. We're still in the customs union. We vote to leave. Yes, well, the customs union point, Charles, you're the first person to raise it tonight. Uh, but what is really interesting is that, you know, actually, in the political declaration, you know, and I quote, we're going to build and improve on the single customs territory. And all the way through, all of these documents, the existing ones and the new ones that came out last night, there seems to be a, a continual commitment from this government to stay as close as we can to the customs union. And that, and that Charles, just is not Brexit, is it? No, no. To me, I expected to leave. And I'll be honest with you, I expected two years of negotiations, not, ex not an extension transition period to do the negotiations. I thought that would have been done in one. But when she loses tonight, I believe she may have the guts, correct me if I'm wrong, to stand up and say, I'm now taking control and I'm going to go and ask for an extension off my own back, which she can do. Yeah, but, know, know. Well, but, but if she asks for extension... Uh, you know, that's the moment at which, isn't it, the EU might, might might start making lots of demands on her, like holding a second referendum. Well, if she goes for an extension, the best thing she could do if she went for one is say to the EU, I'm going for an extension until 2021, and we do all the deals, everything right the way through till then, and we leave then. And that's the only way you could do it. Yeah, well, Charles, Charles, apart from what you want, what do you think will happen? Well, she'll get voted down, and I'd, I don't, I'd love her to stand up and say, I'm resigning, goodbye. I really would. Well, we're getting close. We're getting close. Charles, thank you. Neil and Leon C says to me, I'm a long-term fan of yours, Nigel, and appreciate what you've done. But is the reality not that if Mrs May's deal doesn't go through, we will end up staying in the EU? My problem, Neil, is if Mrs May's deal does go through, effectively, we still stay in the European Union, we pay a huge amount of money, we're stuck in an arrangement that doesn't even have an Article 50 to get out of it, uh, and it is Brexit in name only, Neil, is being plight about this arrangement. Frankly, 
frankly, I think by voting this down, and if Barnier and others want to threaten us, I think, Neil, we're getting a few steps closer to possibly leaving on March the 29th with a clean break. I still wouldn't put it above 30%, but it's a lot higher than it was yesterday, and I certainly believe that. David Middleton is a first-time caller. Good evening, Dave. Oh, yes, good evening to you, Nigel. Pleasure to speak with you. Uh, well, and Anna, Anna York. We've actually had leave for in this uh, weekend in the uh, Vicky Falls constituency of Chelmsford for Leave Means Leave. So, uh, okay, uh, right, well, welcome. So, Dave, I presume that as a Leave Means Leaver, you're against this deal? Oh, of course. <laughs> yes, it's, as, you, as you say, it's just obviously like being uh, locked in, uh, paying loads of money with no way out. I actually think Theresa, and I've actually, I actually sent her an email on uh, Sunday night. I don't know if, you, if you're listening, Theresa, if you've read my email, but I think we need to be big and bold and stand up and go against the will of Parliament. Wherever Parliament decides, do not implement it and take us out on WTO. You can do, Dave. She's got the power to do it. But didn't she look a bit weak and broken today? Is that say again? Beg your pardon? A bit weak and broken today. It looked like she was in charge of any of this to me, Dave. I, I, I actually think she should stand up against all of this nonsense going on in Parliament. Because Parliament are going against the will of the people. The people have voted. The MPs are in Parliament because of the people. The people put them there to do their work for them. And the MPs that are voting against the will of the people should be ashamed of themselves. This is absolutely diabolical, I think. I think. Well, Dave, a lot of people will agree with that. I think we, we, we are being treated in a very contemptuous way. Um, a lot of our political class want to overturn the referendum result. This Prime Minister has told the House of Commons over a hundred times we are leaving on March the 29th and we still could if she had the will to stick with the legislation. You're listening to The Nigel Farage Show here on LBC at 6.30 in time for the news with Lisa Aziz. Well, in 25 minutes' time, MPs will get their chance to have their say. But for now, you've got your chance to have your say. Would you vote for this deal? Because I certainly wouldn't. Tell me I'm wrong. Let's go to Michael in South Wales, a first-time caller. Good evening, Michael. Good evening, Nigel. Delighted to be able to speak to you. Well, welcome. So what would you do, Michael? Definitely vote against. There's no doubt about that. This is possibly the worst deal any British Prime Minister has ever put forward to Parliament. It's, it's exactly the same as the 230 vote that we had a few uh, weeks ago. Yes. So, yes, a repeat performance, please. It's the worst deal in history, Michael, isn't it? It absolutely is. It's, uh, it's unspeakable. Uh, I, I watch lots of the debates, on, and I've been very active in, in Leave. We've shook hands a few times, Nigel. Have we? Very good. <laughs> One of the many thousands that have shook hands with you and had a brief conversation <laughs> at various meetings uh, over the years. But, yes, she is, uh, I would say, the possibly uh, worst Prime Minister ever. Um, and I think one of the reasons is, and you've been in business, and I have myself over many years, and if we have a project, and I don't care what discipline it is, you have a project you want to achieve, and you put a team together, you put a team together who have the same object in mind, would you really put a team together that two-thirds are against the object of well, the project? Well, absolutely. Including the leadership? <coughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, the cabinet, it's a Remainers cabinet. <coughs> Excuse me. Have we got a Remainers Brexit, Michael? No, we haven't. No, and, and this is the other point I'd like to make, is that when you listen to MPs in Parliament, why did they stand and be elected to the oldest legislature ever? Wasn't it to make, be able to make laws on behalf of your constituents well, or to influence so. laws that are made yeah. on behalf yeah. of your constituents? These yeah, I'd people, have thought so, Michael, but they appear to be happy for us to be part of the European project. Michael, thank you for your kind words. Thank you for your call. Jason on text says, Hi, Nigel. May doing the same and expecting different results. Insanity or contemptuous? Uh, well, I don't know, Michael, the answer to that. I'm up to Mansfield to speak to Ross, another new caller. Good evening, Ross. Evening, Nigel. Lovely to talk to you. Good to talk to you. So, if, if this deal goes down, Ross, there's a risk, you know, particularly with the threats we're getting tonight, we could be forced to just leave with no deal. Well, well that would be uh, best all round, in my opinion, I think. But you've been told, Ross, that money will leave the country, you could lose your job, your house price could go down. I mean, don't you listen to these clever people? 
Do you know what? I spoke to my grandparents for some length. I'm a young man. I'm 24 years old. Work yep. full time as an electrician. And uh, I spoke to my grandparents for some length. My grandma told me in the 1960s she used to go to the shop and buy three eggs and three tomatoes to feed my granddad, my uncle, my dad. And she didn't have an egg owner a tomato because they couldn't afford to do that. They're hard times. We don't know hard times today, especially my generation of people. We're a strong nation, and I think we've got, if we have got grit, determination, like no other sort of people, and we can, we can grasp hold of our own destiny here, and we can Ross, make a better life for myself, my family, and my future family. Ross, I, I love I the passion. I can hear it in your voice. Do you think our leaders have grit and determination? No, right now, no. And I don't know whether they're trying to push their own agenda, whether they've got money involved in Europe, I don't know. But for the little man working 12 hours a day, and my girlfriend works 12 hours a day as a paramedic, just to make ends meet, we, we would rather take the hard times now, I think, to better have a prosperous future for ourselves and our well, offspring. Do you, know, do you know what, Ross? There's no guarantee of hard times. We were told, if we, you know, if we voted leave, immediately half a million jobs would go, and they got it wrong. I love your passion, Ross. Great call. Thank you very, very much indeed. Steve says, Nigel, the only way Mrs May can redeem herself is for us just to leave. Matt and Sidcup says, Nigel, I'd reject her deal as it's inferior to the one we've currently got. I said from the off to anyone that would listen, leave properly or don't leave. They are the two options. Well, Matt, in a sense, I agree with you. There was a fork in the road. You, know, you either take one direction or you take another. She's tried to do a bit of both, try to please everybody, try to hold her party together, and it has been an abject failure of leadership at every level. That is what I think. Michael in Norwich is a new caller. Good evening. Hello, Nigel. Uh, pleasure to speak to you. Good to speak to you. So what's going to happen, Michael? Well, he'll be voted down, obviously. There's, you know, there's no, it's a ridiculous deal in the first place. So there's no way that it can, it can get through tonight. Um, uh, and I think she's in trouble. Hmm. Doesn't she deserve to be in trouble? Well, yeah, absolutely. Uh, to be honest with you, I, I do think whoever stepped into that job had a very difficult job ahead of them. You know, let, let's sure. not get away with that. She, she definitely had a difficult job coming up. This whole thing's been handled terribly from the beginning. It should have been a Brexiteer or a Lever that, want, that was in charge in the first place. We were putting a Remainer in charge of, of the Brexit you know, negotiations. Ridiculous in, in the first place, in my opinion. And, you know, she should have been a lot stronger on this. In my opinion, from the beginning, it should have been, right, we're going to leave with no deal. If, if the EU can offer us something that we're interested in, then we'll listen. But as it stands, we're planning to leave with no deal. Yeah, I mean, Mike, uh, you know, if, if that had happened, my view is they'd have come running down the corridor afterwards and said, please don't go, please don't go, because they sell us, you know, 100 million bottles of Italian Prosecco every year and BMWs and all the rest of it. But she didn't do it, did she? No, I absolutely agree with that. I, and I truly believe, I agree with you. They, they'd have come after us. They would not have wanted us to leave with no deal. We import a lot from the EU. Um, you, no one wants to lose a huge trading partner like that. It's absolutely ridiculous. We, we look like a laughing stock at the moment as a country. We, we have so. begged and borrowed and, and begged the EU to give us the deal that we want. And we still can't do it. We still can't uh, negotiate a good deal. And if it came to a no deal, Michael, if, if, if in the end... You know, she stands firm or we're forced out and we leave on a no deal. How worried are you? I'm not worried at all. It, the day after the Brexit result came in, it, people were walking around like, like somebody had died. You know, but, but do you know what happened? It, everything carried on. The sun still came up and we moved on. <laughs> yeah, the pound dropped. But actually, it's steadily recovering. We, yep. the, life will go on. We, we're an investable country. Investors aren't suddenly going to turn their noses up. I work in property. You know, mm. so, so I've, seen, I've seen effects, you know, come through. But actually, we've got to a point now, my first three months of this year have been better than my last four months of last year because people, there's a Brexit hang-up, hangover, if yeah. you like. People are bored of it now, and people just want to get on. Let's get on with our lives. Let's just leave. Michael, love you. Great call. Thank you. Lewis Goodall from Sky saying, he's just spoken to Steve Double. Steve Double is a Conservative MP for Cornwall. Uh, you're a sceptic. Um, with 20 minutes to go, and he still doesn't know which way he's going to vote. And Goodall says, I've spoken to lots of Tory MPs who echo that. I wonder if there'll be some last-minute decisions in the voting lobbies which might surprise us. 
well, I suppose anything's possible with MPs because they're quite good, aren't they, at saying one thing and doing another. I still do not believe that after what Geoffrey Cox has said, there's a cat's chance in hell of this deal going through. You're listening to The Nigel Farage Show here on LBC. It's 6.45 and time for the news headlines with Lisa Rizzi. Well, despite having an absolutely horrendous day, Mrs May, and having been contradicted openly by her Attorney General, Geoffrey Cox, some signs in the Commons that one or two, uh, maybe a little bit more of a trickle now, of MPs are coming back towards her to support the deal. I wonder whether Mr Barnier's threat of 45 minutes ago that said, unless you vote for this deal, there'll be no transition, namely, you're just going to have to leave on March the 29th. I wonder whether that threat has made a bit of a difference. And reports circulating now that former Brexit Secretary David Davis will be voting for the deal. And I wonder if that happens, whether he may well bring some others with him. I still think she loses, but hey, maybe it is beginning to narrow. Um, now, the, the Brexit Secretary, Steve Barclay, um, he's now up on his feet making a statement. Let's go live to the House of Commons. The deal must change. And the government has listened to the concerns of the House, and it has done so. It returns to present a revised package, which my right honourable friend, the Prime Minister, my right honourable friend and learned friend, the Attorney General, and I are putting to the House, uh, which signals a moment in time when we can move forward and when the country can move forward. It delivers the certainty our businesses need, the guarantees our citizens seek, the protections requested across the House on workers' rights and environmental standards. And on Gibraltar, on Gibraltar, as the Chief Minister himself has said on many occasions, the Prime Minister has been absolutely clear that we stand behind British sovereignty for Gibraltar and that will never change. Above all, a vote for the deal tonight will deliver a wider global message that when this country votes, respecting strongly held differences of opinion, its Parliament acts on that public vote. Mr Speaker, in recent weeks the Prime Minister and senior members of the Government have engaged widely, from trade unionists like Len McCluskey, to businesses, to EU leaders and to many colleagues across the House, even on one occasion when he finally got round to it with the Leader of the Opposition. Tonight the Government presents a package of measures which will extinguish the risk of no deal and remove the democratic threat posed by no Brexit. The The fear of being trapped in the backstop of the EU losing, using its leverage in negotiations has been repeatedly raised, Mr Speaker, in previous debates. I do not believe the EU ever intended to approach our future relationship in bad faith. And indeed, it's a slight irony that those who say they are European suggest that the backstop and the EU acting in bad faith is a concern of theirs. It's certainly not my experience of dealing with them. We share values and we want to trade together. But we have adre- acted to address that risk. Of course, I'll give way to my right of friend. Well, there's an intervention there. We will, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to the callers. Steve Barkley there, he's summing up. Uh, it looks to me like they're going to lose in a few minutes' time, but if David Davis and people like that suddenly... I, I can't believe that David Davis would vote for this deal. He resigned from the Cabinet over the withdrawal agreement, over the backstop, and, and the Attorney-General tells us nothing has changed. I wonder whether they're trying, above all, to save the Conservative Party. I wonder whether that's their motivation, whether they're scared of a second referendum. I don't know. Nonetheless, I think the deal still goes down. I'm going to go to Ros in Oswestry, another first-time caller. Ros, what would you do if you were down there tonight? Well, I think they're a bunch of spineless creeps, to be honest, Nigel. <laughs> I, I, I feel really angry towards them because they uh, betrayed the British public tonight. If they vote this, if they vote this through, they mm. they might as well pack up the House of Parliament, turn it into a museum, and all go and live in Brussels, because none of us will ever vote again. We, we How long, really, Ross, have you really felt upset. like this? Uh, well, I've supported you since uh, you started UKIP many years ago. 
I've right. been on the streets. I've been on the I've been on the huskins for you. Um, yep. I've never actually joined you, but I've always supported you. Uh, yep. But I felt very strongly. Uh, I voted in 1973. Was it to 75. be a member of the common market? Uh-huh. Nobody, nobody asked me about the flag. Nobody asked me if I wanted to be part of federal Europe. And now I have politicians who are lying to me, who are cheating me. And I do feel strongly, Nigel. No, I can tell. I can tell. Well, let's hope this deal goes down, Ross. Thanks for your support. Thanks for your call. Barbara says to me on Facebook, we should have left in 2016. That's what I voted for. Not any deal. Well, I agree with that, Barbara. Ben says... What are the odds on May resigning tomorrow morning? Well, the one thing about May, she has been remarkably limpet-like, hasn't she? Stuck on that rock with all these storms crashing all over her. Uh, but I have to say, if she loses this by three figures or more, I just, I just don't see how she can possibly stay on. But I've said that before, and I've been wrong. Alan is a new caller from Broome in Bedfordshire. Good evening, Alan. Hello, Nigel. How are you? I'm, well, I'm all right. I'm just <laughs> really hoping, Alan, even though I've wanted Brexit for 25 years... I'm hoping this deal goes down in a few minutes' time because it doesn't deliver Brexit and it leaves us trapped. I would vote it down too, Nigel, but the problem is I can see why people are changing because what they see is we're likely to not get Brexit at all the way it's going because what will happen, they'll, they'll vote against no deal tomorrow, then they'll go for an extension, mm. probably for another referendum, but the, but the problem is they're not going to give us the, the question that we want on the referendum. We're going to get May's deal or remain. Nobody well, that would be, but that'll so be outrageous. It would be outrageous, but that's what we're going to be stuffed with, Nigel. Mm. They're going to oh. stuff us. You can see it coming. That's, it's quite, I have not seen a single person that's talking about another referendum say that it should be a straight remain or leave with no deal. Well, I'm not sure, Alan. I'm not sure remain should even be on the ballot paper. We voted no, on I, that, I, didn't I'm we? I'm absolutely sure it shouldn't. But it's what we're going to get, Nigel. And what I would so hope what are we going to do, Alan? People like yourself that are uh, prominent campaigners are lobbying and campaigning to make sure that we get the correct question on what I see as this almost inevitable now forced into a second referendum. Now, Parliament is supposed to be, you know, our representatives. You're basically saying they're failing in their task. Oh, they completely failed. They failed from the word go. And so I think what do we do, Alan, to change they things? They didn't want to go. They didn't want to go and they're going to they're stuff us. That's the bottom line. Mm. Everything they've done has, has followed a path that means we're not going to get what we voted for. And actually, Nigel, I voted to remain originally. Did you? But, and that was because I was, in terms of the EU, I was politically naive. I didn't look into it. It took a very short period of looking into this European mafia who are now giving us orders and sending us texts by tweet to do as that we're told for me to well, change my mind. They certainly are. Well, Alan, look, I understand your sentiments. Thank you for your call. Uh, you know, there are absolutely millions. Jacob Rees-Mogg has just spoken in the House of Commons and said he will be voting against the deal. Thank goodness for that. And we'll see what David Davis does and whether that was just a rumour. Well, whatever happens, I'm meeting Michel Barnier at nine o'clock tomorrow morning. I wonder what more threats he'll have for us. I think she loses tonight. I think she loses quite big. We'll know in a few moments' time. Uh, later on tonight, it'll be Thomas Warbrig. But taking us through this big, dramatic moment in British politics and history is Ian Dale. Nigel, thank you very much indeed. It doesn't get much bigger than this. Tonight could 